Hi guys, welcome to Snakes and Adders. We're continuing our intermediate series by dis today discussing the genus Aspidites. They originate from Australia. There are two species. Aspidites ramsayi, which is this one, and Aspidites melanocephalus, which is the black-headed python. Aspidites ramsayi is also known as the woma, or Ramsey's python. They're medium-sized pythons. The blackheads grow slightly bigger. Black-headed python females will reach about eight or nine feet in length. The boys usually six to seven feet. The woma python, the girls anything from five to seven feet, and the boys from about five to five and a half, six feet. Um, obviously, being a python, they're egg layers. They um, use maternal instinct, incubate their own eggs. In the wild, they are reptile specialist feeders. So they don't have any um, heat pits the same way that pythons uh, or Morelia do. Uh, and uh, also Anteresia, they have uh, the labial pits. Um, these guys don't have any visual pits on their faces at all. Their head is slightly compressed into a sort of shovel shape. They're nocturnal, they just can't be out during the heat of the day. If they do find themselves out and exposed, they counteract this by throwing big loops of their body over the hot soil to touch as little of the floor as possible. Think of a sidewinder, but less graceful. Um, they just make absolutely fantastic pets. In captivity, they feed very well on rodents. In fact, too well. You've got to watch them. They just gannets. They'll eat anything. Um, they are not a difficult snake to keep. They are hardy. The only reason that we've put them into intermediate is because as a group, I've included the black-headed python and at nine feet that's more than some people would be willing to take on if we had some uh, beginner who came in and done some research wanted to buy a woma python we'd have no issue with selling them one as there's no extra humidity required these animals will shed at nominal humidity and shed well which is rare for pythons because usually you've got to spray them raise the humidity or you're perpetually raising the humidity there's no such complications here um, they love a nice warm tank 33 34 degrees at the hot spot they can cool down to about 26 degrees at the cool end uh, you keep them on a dry loose substrate like lignocell uh, give them some low branches they might they may climb but not 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 avidly um, they only need a small water bowl enough to drink from they don't need to bathe in it like i said with them being from semi-arid areas or fully arid areas they're, they're actually uh, pretty much bomb proof as far as pythons go um, you could probably even go as far as to say they're one of the easiest pythons to keep there were complications with reproduction um, particularly with the black headed pythons i heard tale that you had to manipulate uh, incubation temperatures at a certain period throughout the incubation to get hatching to be successful this must have been to signify some sort of seasonal change as the animals would be breeding uh, the wild they used to be incredibly high value and until the zoos in Europe had bred them, reproduced them, released them into captive hands uh, they were a myth that people wanted to try and get hold of um, subsequently they're now available, they're bred vet pretty widely some of the black-headed pythons have also got some morphs and cultivars going as well. Uh, they remain incredibly high value. Um, standard blackheads have dropped considerably. I remember Paul, who uh, is my right-hand man and my mentor here at Snakes and Adders. I remember him going to, I think it was Rotterdam, and uh, bought a pair of uh, adult black-headed pythons. This is way back in 2000, 2001, and I think he parted with about £10,000 for the pair. So yeah, they, they were incredibly high value animals. Um, always been sought after and never really fully appreciated. Certainly the Womers for just how easy going they are. If they're handled regularly, they're as tame as a corn snake. She's absolutely gorgeous thing. This thing, she is relaxed, chilled out, quite happy looking around. She'll feed readily, she'll shed with no issue. She's not going to be developing respiratory infections because our humidity is wrong. She's just bomb proof, basically. This snake will probably need a 4x2x2 by two by two viv. Uh, blackhead's probably a 6x2x2 six by two by two viv, especially if it's a big girl. We don't really go in for racking systems. Uh, certainly not for these as well because they have a, a, um, a tendency to arrest airflow, increase humidity, and that may well cause you problems. So having them in a viv with a bit of airflow, that would be far better. Um, long term you'd be better off using a ceramic heat emitter um, and we can control that using a, a day night dimming stat uh, and you would cycle them for breeding thus giving them a slightly cooler winter period 
Australia is Southern Hemisphere, they do have a cooler season. So we can uh, manipulate that to encourage the males to produce sperm and the females to uh, mature the follicles and the ova so that they were so that we're uh, oviduct sorry so that we're ready to rock and roll uh, yet yeah, honestly bang on the genus is aspidites have a look they are well worth researching um, it's like I say with the womas if a, a beginner's done the research and, and done a bit of reading we'd have no no qualms in selling one as such so those I mean honestly just She's absolutely stunning. This beautiful yellow head. They got these like, like suntan sort of eye brows over the top of the head. They're just they're just ace. So uh, yeah, I hope you're enjoying the videos. We'll keep producing them. I'm sorry there's been a bit of a break, but we've been incredibly busy, busy since Christmas and New Year. Uh, we'll keep trying to produce the videos on a more regular basis. Um, visit the website, which is www.snakesandadders.co.uk to see what we're all about. Cheers.